He's he prospectively, it probably comes from insecurity, but he gets to ask for what he wants and she gets to turn him down. The, if, when a woman says, I'm not going to date a guy who's under 5'5", five, five, or she's, I'm not going to take this guy because he's a few pounds overweight, or he doesn't have enough money. I'm not going to date a guy who doesn't make $100,000 a year. We yeah. set those boundaries, and women, like, well, she can decide what she wants. Well, so can Jonah. Right. I'm not saying it's not sick. Yo, 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 what's up, Square Pit Brigade? On this episode, we have comedian Paul Mercurio. He's here, and we discuss how parenting can affect your relationship. If Jonah Hill was setting boundaries or just being abusive, and Kiki Palmer, was she appropriate or inappropriate? Um, the interesting take on that. Yeah, man, this is uh, we, we talk about that a little bit. We get into boundaries and stuff. And uh, if you love the show and you love what we do, uh, please go over to patreon.com slash manschool202 to support us uh, because we do all the bonus content over there, including uh, listener mail. Uh, we're also archiving all the old episodes of Manschool202 when we first start out as the Beige Phillips show. All of those are being put up uh, one uh, one at a time over on Patreon.com. Patreon.com slash Manschool202 is where you can go for that. Also, if you want any relationship consultations, you can uh, email me at advicefromharry at gmail.com. Or you can, for Dante, go to uh, DanteNero.com and click on consult. Let's get it. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. Yo, 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 what up, PYBB? Get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted, and I am really, really excited. But I'm going to get to that in a second. First of all, I want to speak to the, the prince of porn, the sultan of sin. Give it up for half, oh Harry. God. What's going on, Harry? Oh, my goodness. This vanity play keeps getting longer and longer, man. <laughs> I got more nicknames. I appreciate it, Dante. Uh, and now I got to live up to them. That's the hard part. The Sultan of Sin. Yeah, the that's Sultan what we Sin. I like that one. You need to get a pendant. You got to get a diamond pendant with that. Yeah, on it, I got a big, a long one. One of those Israeli diamond, all Israeli blood diamonds. That's what I want. Yeah, yeah exactly. I got I to gotta find the guy who that uh, Uncut Gems was based on and just right. get him to do it. Just you before know, he gets killed by the mob, you got to make sure you get into his office and get the diamonds before he gets whacked. His brother has a, a documentary called Uncut Dicks. <laughs> it's the same, same thing. A spinoff, huh? A spinoff. Interesting. I tried my dick. My dick auditioned for it, but I didn't get in. It was too, <laughs> too small. It was uncut, but it was too small. <laughs> like, yo. Uh, we, let we me have a lens. <laughs> we have a lens big enough for that. Come on. You gotta, you gotta get a loop. <laughs> Yo, Oops. let me uh introduce my man. Yo, this dude, very, very funny dude. Emmy Ward winner, writer, comedian, all kinds of shit. I love this dude. I've known him. 20 years um one of the best people i know give it up for paul mercurio yo what up paul hey what's up dante harry love you too man you guys yeah, to see you so man. great yeah I, you're you're one of the guys you walk in the club and uh you walk the other way no i'm kidding uh, <laughs> no. it's like I, I got no money dante leave me alone no you walk in the club always a smile a hug very positive dude as you know a lot of comedians aren't every all everybody there's a lot of guys that would would argue that but for you i got that for you because you're just no, a, you're, you're a genuine oh there's dickheads you know me I don't, i'm i'm a nice da- dude but i'm not a pushover so yeah if you're, a, if you're a dirt bag you can you can get all the smoke all at once but you yeah. just was always a genuine yeah. Thanks, straight man. up dude and, and um i, I just was, tried not to be like todd lynn that was oh the, mm-hmm. that's really do you know we uh, you know it's funny harry wanted to throw a dinner again i wanted, wanted to do to... a dinner we didn't do it since the yeah. pandemic ruined the t- the annual todd lynn death well, day do uh i'll i'll do it I'll, sh- I'll come i'll come with a short arm and everything <laughs> I'll oh, take, you'll come you know, in costume? Like, I'll oh, take man, the, like a Star Wars convention? Yeah, I'll, tape, I'll duct tape this arm up. And we should we, do it, gonna... and you can't eat with your left hand. You can only eat with your <laughs> right oh, hand. Oh, my God. Hey, we got to get, get Greg Judge there, because poor Greg, Greg Judge had to Greg, deal with it. Oh. Uh, Jordan Ferber. Oh, yeah. Um, Pete, Holmes. Uh, Pete Holmes. Pete Holmes. Pete Holmes is not a fan. Not a fan. Mm. And I have a com- bu- bunch of guys that I think would, if uh, we throw out a list, I think if we throw out a general thing, we'll get some people. I think we could get 30. I think we yeah. could get 30. Now, for those yeah. uh, unfamiliar, Todd Lynn was a comedian who has since passed away who was very Couldn't, that, couldn't have happened to a nicer guy. <laughs> <laughs> Just, I, was... I mean, the, 
the type of guy who was just mean to everybody unnecessarily. I mean, yeah. He was a decent comic, a serviceable comic. Uh, for the amount of shit he talked, he was not a, a great comic, but he was just yeah. mean, especially to the younger guys. And it's the type of guy that people who don't talk shit about anybody, people like yeah. Pete Holmes has nothing bad to say about anybody, yeah. uh, will will be like, fuck that guy, fuck Todd Lynn. And mm -hmm. so Dante, this is the annual text that Dante sends out to all the people. to <laughs> read it if we, we can take a moment. Uh, texting my friends, uh, this is January 27th, uh, the, the, I believe the day that Todd passed away. Yeah. Texting my friends to wish you all a happy Todd Lynn is dead day. <laughs> <laughs> On this day, a horrible, inconsiderate, selfish, abusive, and parasitic individual died, and the world became a better place because of it. <laughs> Death is usually a tragic event, unless, of course, it ends the abuse of others. So I don't mince words when I say it couldn't have happened to a better guy. <laughs> Happy TLD day, Todd Lynn's dead day. Oh my god, that is the best. Oh. It's so true. And then he played the race card too. Like if things oh, yeah. weren't working out, he'd like start attacking people for being like I remember him screaming in stand up New York about not getting enough spots and saying pointing at like white guys and going, he gets more, he's white because he's white. He's and it's like, no, because you're just a fucking huge asshole and yeah. nobody wants to be around you. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. and the, uh, the, you know, sadly, uh, he didn't go with one of our hands. We None of us had anything no. to do with his death, un unfortunately. I, like, I'm, I'm not going to comment on that. <laughs> <laughs> That's I don't right. know if the statute of limitations you, is you, up. Yeah, you know, I remember now, you still don't have an alibi for where you were. Let's, <laughs> let's move it on. And it's a podcast. <laughs> let's move on. So uh, here's the thing. I was thinking about when I, when, when you, when I, you know, I knew you would, you would come in on. I was thinking about how much aligned um, the the your thinking in terms of relationships was, and like Paul's very Italian, very. But here's the thing that that is interesting. From what I remember, Paul's mom is a is a no joke, no oh, yeah. shit taken. What was your dad like? A pussy. He was a pussy. <laughs> Well, a little bit like he, you I mean, know, I mean, that's honest. I'm not, you know, he, I mean that like, I mean, look, I love my dad, but I think he died just to get away from my mother. I really, really? Do. like, I think he was just like, uh, fuck this Lord, take me loud. Even if I have to hang out with Todd Lynn, take me now. <laughs> um, so my mother like was super progressed just to kind of recap for people like mm. started her own business in a tenement house with two babies in the sick, early sixties when high school educated, when most. Most women, let alone Italian mothers, didn't do that. They stayed home and they took right. care of the house and raised the kids, which is a full time job. And she's right. like, well, through that, men aren't going to tell me what to do. Society's not going to tell me what to do. I want to do what I want. Real like revolutionary kind of thinker mm -hmm. and everything. But, you know, it's like Greek mythology with that as a double edged sword, because that same person like it's all about her, a narcissist. We all had to work in the business. None of us could go away to school. It was like we all were like indoctrinated into her business and we didn't ask to be we never had a right. choice so it was all bullshit right? right and then to the point where she her business was so important to her my grandmother her mother was living with us and she was epileptic and in a bedridden and she had a catheter bag and my job when i was in middle school was i before i could go out and play do anything with my friends i had to come home and i had to empty her catheter bag and make sure she was all clean and all that stuff. If wow. You know I mean. Yeah, yeah. And I, yeah, you look back, you're like, you shouldn't do that to a fucking yeah. kid. Right, you know? right, 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 right. So I step on my mother's air hose whenever I can. But anyway, <laughs> uh, so so she, so my father, they went, they went, they met in high school in Rhode Island, which is where I grew up. So my dad was a more chill guy and he was great to be around, but you have to, if there were two, like my mother, forget it. It would be like, it just explode. you know, it wouldn't work. So he just was like, you know, yeah, I remember my brother was, my older brother was arguing with my mother one time and they were going back and forth and my father had a bottle of beer and he goes, Arthur, is my brother, he goes, Arthur, he goes, just do what she tells you. It's a lot easier. And she's just, like, <laughs> and that was like it. Yeah. So, um, but the problem with that is there were times when he should have like stepped in. Right. You know, and like kind of. So, you know, what are you doing? This is yeah, not this is wrong. Yeah. And, yeah, and yeah. he did every once in a while, but not enough. Like he should have right. like dropped the hammer more. But I think it was just like he kind of wears you down. So she's like 95 now. Mm. And since I've been on, we closed her store, which was open for 63 years. Wow. And 
How long ago did you close it? Uh, about a year or so ago. Oh, yeah. wow. So it's been going on. And who yeah. was running it? Who was yeah. running it? She was. Yeah. At 93, yeah. she was running the store. 94. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. With like a little bit of help. And she didn't couldn't drive anymore, so she was taking Lyft, Uber. But she, mm-hmm. so she's got an, she's got like you know she's got a, a smartphone, but she doesn't really know how to use it. So like yeah, this yeah. is this is like this is my mother using a smartphone. Okay, yeah. this is like literally. Like, <laughs> basically, she just rapes it. That's all. She uh, just yeah. ra- right. And so she would get herself to the store and back, you know, and doing doing Lyft, and um, and she didn't want to close the store and she and i was like hey we should do like a liquidation deal she's like i don't want to do that and she wouldn't tell me why and i found out later she had plans to try to open the store somewhere else at 94 i'm like you're not opening the store anywhere else right mm-hmm. so she closed the store and now she's gotta and that was her whole life and that's the problem so she doesn't know what to do with herself so right. i said to her the other day i go look we'll take you to like uh like the community center like there's a yeah, know, yeah. senior oh, center senior she goes center. And she literally said to me she goes i'm not going there those people are old i'm like you're fucking old you're yeah. 95 yeah. what are you thinking? you're gonna go skydiving with taylor swift you're yeah. old okay yeah. that's what you're gonna do and so so what i tried to do with my son is not do what she did because i can be like my mom sometimes but not make him feel guilty about shit my wife definitely speaks up to you know like to at me if i get a little crazy and but but my dad he was just like uh, you know, he just kind of let it go, you know? So here, here's my thing. So your, but your philosophy about relationships is pretty <laughs> traditional. I mean, I'm not, I mean, as a traditional as one could be, I mean, you're not abusive and you know, you know, you're not promising well, people movie. It, it, <laughs> it, dep- it depends on the day and what we're doing. You know I what get I mean? You, I get you. It's um, a case by case basis. No, <laughs> but it, it's a situation where you, you have this kind of, you've always had this kind of strong masculine energy. Mm-hmm. And what I find is, I mean, we've been doing this podcast. How, how long are we now? 10 years, 11 years, mm-hmm. Harry. Uh, yeah, we're on our 11th now. 11 years. Yeah. And, wow. uh, Great. And and we do consultations. Even Harry does consultations now. DanteNero.com. Click on consult. Harry is uh, advice from Harry at gmail.com. And so we're able to able to monetize that to a certain and help some guys. But one of the things that I find it is always a pervasive thing is that when a guy doesn't have a didn't grow up with a father or grew up with a father who was kind of was was a pussy or was soft, they don't have this masculine model. Because as a as a man, as a child, you you look the, your father is the masculine figure mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. you model. Like that's right. that's right. why it's so yeah, important. And so, yeah, and studies show that the boys uh, sort of model more after the male figure as opposed to the female figure. So yeah, right, definitely. right. And we a lot of times guys will marry their mom. They'll marry a version of their mom. So that I didn't do. Right, that, right. Yeah. But but there's a you know you got guys who mothers are very kind of overbearing and abusive, and then yeah. they'll and you find them keep chasing down these women who are overbearing and abusive because their uh, that relationship being abusive feels like home. It feels yes. normal to them, and yeah. so. I find myself consulting with guys in that situation a lot. How did you stay on track and still have this masculine energy? And what parts of those, like second part of the question is what part of those energy, that energy is your mom that you picked up that you have a problem with? Well, um, it's funny because my mother is, uh, and I talk about her in my act a bit, and I, but, and I also talk about men and women in the relationships, but it's important for people to know I come at how I look at women, I think very differently than a lot of guys because of my mother. Like she was, and I'm only, it's the tip of the iceberg what I'm describing to you. Like she got herself like president of the state PTA, Parents mm-hmm. Teacher Association. She was on the school committee appointed, political appointments. Like what she did was amazing, but she really made us all pay. And so what I, <laughs> what, what I, but what I get from, what I got from her was um her sense of fight and i'm not going to take any shit from you which i then turned around and had to apply to her in order for me to be independent and be my own person and so i'm more like my mother than my father like that there is no way if i were my father 
I would have been, dealt with my mother that way. And I don't think my mother started out that way. I think, you know, she was an 18 year old girl and she was right. cute and he was handsome and they, whatever. And, right. and then it became this thing. And like, and so, um, and so the, the part of the part of, it's almost like I got masculine, traditional masculine points of view and traits from my mother and not my right. father, if that makes sense. Yeah. You yeah. I mean, and, I, mean and, I mean, it's your story. So you, I mean, I mean, you're not, you're not no child. Yeah. So you, you, I mean, we've all kind of looked at this perspectively, like, how am I here in this place? I mean, at least you should have at this point. So, I mean, you saying that is, is an interesting thing because you don't hear that often. And what you find is that if you find that the guy is modeling the woman, uh, there is, there are specific traits that they, feminine traits that they model as well. Now, was it that your mother was so masculine that she almost didn't have these feminine traits or was there any of those kind of things that you perspectively adopted as well and then adjusted or whatever? Well, uh, she has a dick. And, uh, (laughs) So there's that trait. And I try no. Um, you know, it's funny. This is a great question because I never it was never it's never been framed this way for me. And I never thought about it in this way. But, um, you know, my my mother uh, just not a nurturing person. Like, mm-hmm. I can't remember the last time my mother said I love you. Right. right? I and, and I think she does, but she doesn't say it. And then when she right. kind of hugs you, it's this weird, like mm-hmm. half a hug kind of touch thing. Yeah. And um and I don't know if she doesn't say I love you because she's worried that you're not going to say it back. Like she never calls. I can't, my mother has, I don't, I can literally not remember the, when my mother called me to just say, hi, how are you? Mm-hmm. So my mother got so driven by her own goals. Right. It was really strange. Like she was the prototypical current modern day adult man or woman. Right. Career driven mm-hmm. in 1962. Like right. when, a, when they were a, pushing back on it in every way possible. When, when when women were supposed to stay home and cook and clean for their men and take care of the boys. She had brothers. Her father was died when she was young. So she had to take care of her brothers because she was the only girl in the family. And these were typical Italian guys. Where's the food? I'm going yeah. out. Yeah. And she got she was a she rebelled against everything, which everybody else on the outside looking and thinks it's so charming. But when you have to live with that yeah. Yeah. and under that, it really, it really does a number on you. Right. And so you know, if you want to know what a narcissist, and she really is a narcissist, and and so am I. I think we all are, but she's like, so my mother was very involved in the school system in our state, like for 30 years, and she reached some of the highest late. But do you know my mother never took me to visit a college? Really? My mother never told me. I remember going to take my SATs in my high school, and all these kids had these really thick books. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, what's that? They go, it's an SAT prep book. I go, what's that? They go, there's a prep course. I go, there's a prep course. Oh yeah, it's like six weeks. I got so psyched out. Mm-hmm. There was a fucking prep course. My mother didn't even Bet tell me never... about it. Like, but she was taking care of all these other kids. And my brother and I especially go back and forth. I think part of it was she was competing with us. Her kids resented us on some level and didn't want us to get any farther ahead than she did. Wow. Um, and so- you know, when you're dealing with that, it's sort of like um, you can either buckle under that and go, fuck you. I'm not taking this shit from you. And that's right. how I deal with her. My brother, who's older, gets, he, 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 he's, he was the first one. He had, I think, more hard than I did. He'll kind of buckle from her, you know. And my father was kind of like persona non grata. So, right, right. you know, like I talked to her two nights ago and she's like, oh, I feel alone. I go, I don't want to hear it. She goes, what? I go, we've been trying to get you to go to these social things for two years. It's up to you. You want to sit in the house and stay depressed? Fine. If you think all your kids are going to come, you know, seven days a week to take visit you, that's not how this works. Mm-hmm. We're not, we're not running the store. So I think the bad part of what I got from her is um, the, sometimes the narcissist behavior either that can be that either toward others or like regarding myself, you know, look, I'm a comedian, right? So on some mm-hmm. level where, you know, we're all three of us, like it's about us, right? We make, we put ourselves in the limelight. That's not a bad thing. But when uh, there are times like when I like personalize stuff, because I think I'm a narcissist and I interpret somebody's behavior toward me as something personal when it's not, and they're just got mm-hmm. their own shit going on. Right. I think, I think she has a big insecurity 
and I have I have insecurities, and I think some of that comes from her. That like that's a big thing. And the other is, I when my son, you know, he's older now, but like if I would come home and I'd see my son just sitting around, I would almost reflexively go, "You should be doing something," because that's what my mother did to me, mm-hmm. and I had to fight that really, really hard, like really hard. Mm-hmm. Because that was just that was just in me. Like when my mother pulled into the driveway, you everybody's just, running around, running around, like trying to get, busy, look get busy. a book. Yeah, yeah. And I can remember not just in the house, but it, it, we all had to work in the store. So it was a furniture store. So like she would pull in, and one time she caught my brother and I just standing around talking, and there was nobody in the store. She went ape shit. What are you doing? Get us move. You gotta look busy. They're gonna look in the store and they're gonna they're gonna not want to come in here because they, they think it's no good. I'm like they don't want to come in here because you're a fucking asshole. But right. uh, and so when you live like that, it becomes second nature, and then you pass it on. So I've had to be. And then I say I love you to my son like every time I talk to him a hundred times. Like yeah, because it it, it so it's just. It's just weird, and it's not. Yeah. And the thing is, it's not going to change. But the, the, those are the those are the traits, and I never thought of it this way. But a lot of these masculine traits are actually from her. Right, right, right. I mean, usually what it'll do, what will happen is because yeah, and like guys that I consult with, they will they'll have if they have a father, either they don't have a father, right, and they have no model, or they have a father that was that was kind of soft, and they become soft. And then they allow women to be abusive and so on and so forth. I mean, even, you know, like, you know, back in the days, Patrice and I were pretty close. And mm-hmm. Patrice didn't grow up with his dad, but his mother was, you know, they had that kind of awkward, like that, you ever see the um that movie Step Brothers? With mm-hmm. okay, you know, when they they hug each other at the end after the, the helicopter convention or whatever. It's yeah. like watching him hang and hug his mom was kind of like that. It was just uh, awkward and weird. Like, yeah. what the fuck yeah. happened? Yeah. But Patrice still had kind of chick tendencies. Like, if he got mad at me, he would give me the silent treatment. <laughs> like, he would just not... He'd be mad at me and he wouldn't call me, wouldn't pick up my phone calls. And I wouldn't even know he was mad at me. And I'd be calling him, you know, and then I would think something's wrong. Are you okay? And then yeah. I, when I would get him, he'd be like, yeah, you know, I was just. Uh, yeah, He's the know. last fucking guy that I could picture having the silent treatment. That oh, yeah. never shut up. Uh, I yeah. loved him. But, and oh, he, would, he, would, he would shut me, you know. And then what I realized later was it was funny because he, he said one time he, <laughs> he said that he remembers his mom dating a guy and the guy threw a box fan at her. Right. <laughs> And and I and and the thing he did a joke about this. He was like, "This is how much of a cunt my mom was that he didn't even throw something that was easy to throw. Like it's hard <laughs> to throw it a box fan. It, it, there's no <laughs> yeah. way to hold it. There's yeah, you gotta be plug it. You gotta. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, couldn't you have picked the ashtray or a, a <laughs> right, right, a knife, a glass? <laughs> but just the only thing he got was a box fan. Yeah. I always remember that." But um, what you find is these dudes, and, and a lot of times when I'm helping dudes and I'm consulting with dudes, I'm going to the root of that, of what's going on and making them look at the root of why you are. Because once you know why you are, you can make a decision whether it's good or bad or otherwise. And, and you can also make these adjustments once that you understand that there's this subconscious movement to, to act in certain ways. Um, the other thing is... I, I think the traditional, you know, as much as we're talking about, I mean, I'm I'm under no uh, lack of understanding of how horrible men have been to women throughout the course of with the Me Too thing. And, all, you know, we're talking about, you know, just basically raping. I mean, the other day I watched, uh, you know, I watched uh, the Anita Hill thing with uh, Clarence Thomas. And it's like, Print like you're watching it, and it's cringeworthy. Yeah, what yeah. you know, what what went as okay was just fine. Right, Congressman, are, are you making this up so that you can write a book? Right. Like, geez, right. <laughs> you know, and, and, which is so funny because that is a devious thing that comes from their mind. Because yeah, yeah, no yeah. woman would be like, I'm gonna make it up so I could get a book deal. 
so yeah, I could right. sell books. That's something yeah. only an old yeah. Let me get raped and like sexually assaulted so I could get a book deal, right. and then like, spend and then and then spend like a year just writing a book proposal <laughs> and then a year trying to sell it yeah. and then and then maybe sell six books and yeah. make five. Yeah, okay. So, but but like you know. But you know, and I find the same thing. So I'm on my podcast, which you're going to come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Um, yeah. You tell and, me when um, I'll make it happen. No, yeah, absolutely. Next, let's do the next couple of weeks. So okay. I, I, you know, I'll talk to people about just what they do and how they do it. But also, what comes through is always some something in their life when they were younger mm-hmm. that kind of tells you why they are the way they are now or what mm-hmm. they do now. And so, like when you say, like. Um, it was weird because the f- real father figure for me in my life was my uncle Ralph, who was oh, my okay. okay. He's the one. My father was working all the time too, right? And and he, my uncle Ralph did all the things with me that the father should do. My father right. took me to swim practice, right? Right. Occasionally would take me out on a Sunday or take me to a Red Sox game, but my uncle taught me woodworking. He taught me. Uh, uh, so you didn't have you didn't have not have a fit. You had a figure. It was just a, it was substitute. Oh, it was a substitute. Okay. And he and he uh, took me a uh, horseback riding. And this was by, by the way, when cameras had flash bulbs, he yeah. goes, get on the horse. I'm like eight. And he, he had the flash on. <laughs> and the fucking the horse. Horse <laughs> it was the last time I was on the horse. Jesus. He took he taught me how to golf. Yeah. You know, and uh, his kids were older. I don't know. There was just something that we had. Yeah. And yeah. um. But but, you know, then sort of some of the insecurities that I had, like I remember he was with me at our my parents house and I was like 12 and then he left abruptly. And I said to my mother, why did uh, Uncle Ralph leave? Did I do something wrong? Like I thought I did something wrong. Right. And that that was stuff that I had to even uh, to this day, sometimes I'll do that. Right. You kind of. Right. You put it like, on yourself. Do you yeah. Because, you know, you, you kind of get something. Yeah. Yeah. Because you, my mother, especially it was oh, the default. Like, I remember like you're always getting she, yelled at. So you're always getting yelled you must at. Have done and something in, wrong. And in school, she like never she never gave you the benefit of the doubt when the teachers would call home and say you did something. She just assumed you automatically did it and didn't. Mm-hmm. You know, she, you know, there's some parents that like think their kids are Saying yeah, yeah. Doing the anything. opposite th- of that. I think you got. I think you got to be it's something a in the middle. There's got to like, be a talk balance. to the kids, see what's going on. Yeah. So I think you know, in talking about this, you know, just you know, it's just realizing like, so so. But my uncle Ralph had that brought man. that other part, yeah. and I'm not sure why my father. I know he was tired from working all the time, and I was third of three. Maybe that was it. But like, you know, we watched TV together. We would bowl. He was on a bowling team, so I'd bowl every mm-hmm. once in a while. But like. Beyond that, um, yeah. my interaction with my father was through work, working in the store, the furniture mm. store, delivering furniture, mm. setting up furniture, whatever, like at the where that was kind of where we sort of bonded. So it was like and now my mother's now it's come full circle because that this is what I mean about Greek mythology. The thing that makes you great is your undoing if you let it be, which is right. that store is now gone. Right. And if you're defined by that thing and nothing else, then what do you have? You have nothing. And now right. she's sitting in her house. She's got, you know, she's got money. She's got health. Right. She's 95 and health, physically healthy, mentally. There's no reason she can't be whatever. But I and think there's, a, there's no way to go, no direction to go there, no desire to. Well, I think part of her still thinks that I think her she thinks her life is like her store. And by that, I mean that we, the children, need to come and service her store. Like right. we need to come now and service her seven days a week, even though, you know, my brother's got his life and I live in New York and my mm-hmm. sister's got her life. And she's and to be ni- to be very honest, she's she wasn't n- nice to you guys in the first place. No. So, you know, you do kind of go uh, on the margins. If you're yeah. on the fence about seeing her, you go, nah, fuck it, because yeah. what am I going to get out of it? You know, she's not she's not mean or anything now. It's just. Not now, just, but yeah. She like was. I told her one day, I said to her because my I I walked in and she goes, Paul, what, what's this? And she starts handing me like bills and things to look, look at. I go, I'm not doing this. She goes, Why? I go, You need to acknowledge that I'm here and say some nice things to me, and we're gonna go do something. I'm not here to do things for you. That's right. not how this works. And, and what did she, she say? What was her response to that? She just said, Okay, oh yeah, okay, okay, and she puts the thing down, yeah. and then she stops. Right, but like. Because now I said to her, I go, you uh, 
look, there was a woman that was after my mother's money. I had to take over my mother's estate. I had to mm-hmm. put some trusts in place because not that my mother's got a ton of money, but like right. There, right. Was, there were a couple of people sniffing around. Right. And then I and then I had to I had to put this woman in her place. But I told my mother in there, I said, look, you better you better watch out how you deal with the three of us, the kids, because we're all you got. Right. All your friends, where are they now? Where are these people that used to hang around with you that like thought yeah. you were so great? And I think she realizes that now. Right. But if I might, if I had to do it again, my father should have been a little bit more like, yeah, like you know what I mean. It's a it's a weird thing because I have you know I have three older sisters and I, I I I get along better with the younger one, but the two older one, we don't well. One of them just passed, right? But yeah. the oldest one, I haven't spoken to her since my pat my dad passed, and just and a lot of it has to do with that. My father never really held any of them accountable in any any reasonable, and so and I was the baby brother, and so they could just treat me the way whatever way they wanted, and and then he even when I was older and I would hold them accountable, he would always step in and give them a. a you know, an off ramp so that they wouldn't have to deal with me and they wouldn't hold them accountable. So at the end of my middle sister's life, she was actually living with me in the house that we grew up in and uh, where I had the studio. I mean, I think you came to the studio before, yeah. right? Yeah. So so we're selling that house now because they can't seem to work together to, you know, whatever, which mm. is insane. But what what happened was my sister, my middle sister, who had was like, she was a real cunt. She like always trips How and so? jewelry, and she, you know, always was fly. And guys were buying her stuff, and she was really disrespectful and really, really a cunt in every sense of the word. And she was horrible to me as a human being. And then when she was living with me, um, she was still thought. I mean, this was just her way. The way that she operated with me. Well, why did your parents, why did your mom and your dad let her get away with that? Well, so it's a really um, complicated thing. So my older sister is my father's daughter. My okay. m- my middle sister was my mother's daughter. And then I have a sister among, you know, from the union. Right. And my father favored his older daughter over wow. his stepdaughter. My mother favored her daughter over her stepdaughter and then when my sister came that my whole sister came they both got dumped as and so you have really entitled kind of princess syndrome you can't do nothing wrong and then the two older sisters found themselves tossed to the side which they resented my sis and then there was never this thing and and just i mean you can't pay favoritism with children because they're not going to hold the parents responsible they're going to hold the individuals responsible right. mom liked you better and it's your fault you know right. see with my mother it wasn't a matter of uh us favoritism. competing <laughs> you with each with other her. it was us competing with her yeah and yeah. i was the youngest but i'm the youngest by a lot like I think and I'm not joking. I think that was a mistake because no. I'm just like eight years younger than my sister and I'm right. like almost 10 years younger than my brother. And why the right. fuck would you go through this? that? Right. And, the, and, the, and, you know, my first name is Paul. You know, what street right. I was born on, raised, uh, grew up on Paul what? Street. Oh, so I think okay. my mother was like, was oh, like looked out the window. another kid. Boom. Shot it on the kitchen wow. floor. Let me not name him. Paul. OK, <laughs> let's get out. I got to get back to the store. Yeah. So like she so gave like, up on the, the names very quickly. Yeah, yeah she just, very. Uh, I was lucky I wasn't named Street Street yeah. Material. Actually, that probably would work. <laughs> but you know, exactly. <laughs> Boulevard, Main Road Avenue. <laughs> so I was cul-de-sac Mercurio, but I was like, like <laughs> we were competing with her. Uh, or she was competing with us. Yeah. And and I was left by my brother and sister, which I resent a little bit too, like to kind of fend for myself. Right. Because they were like. I got to get off this ship. They jumped when they yeah, could. Yeah. I'm yeah. 18. I'm going away to school. I'm 18. Yeah. I'm going away yeah. to school. Well, yeah. I was like eight or 10 and I was still stuck in jail. Right. And they would come every once in a while and throw me a piece of bread. And I'm sitting there like clanging yeah, my yeah. cup. And, get me out. and yeah. like, and so I kind of was an only child. And right. so, and my parents, my father kind of emotionally kind of removed himself from everything. And my mother was, so fixated on her store and helping the school system and all these other kids that I was kind of like floating out there going, hello. Right. So yeah. I tend to be extremely self-reliant, proactive, 
the guy that ends up because you have no choice. That's the no, same it was, way. It I was. was. E- it was either that or or you don't survive. I think you don't say that consciously, but I think subconsciously you're like, okay. So like even to this day, there'll be some things where kind of I'm the younger kid or whatever, but I'm taking the lead more than the older. Like, yeah. It is just yeah. the way it is, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there's I, no group mentality. You didn't have a group yeah. to do it. It was just you on your own. Yeah, but, and then I think as we got older, like you know, we had more in common. We were the three kids. My brother, and sister, and I married with kids, whatever. But even I said to my brother like a week ago, I go, I don't want, like because we, we, we're you know he and I talk very regularly. My sister's she's really mo- removed herself more from it, and plus right. her husband, her husband hates my mother and vice versa. So uh-huh. for forty years, it's been that it's yeah. really shitty dynamic. Jeez. But my I said to my brother one day, I go. um, I said, I don't want to do this anymore. I go, I'm sick of this. I go, whenever I interact with you and Karen, that's my sister, I go, it's all about mom, mom shit, whether it's her mm-hmm. physical health or mental health, her right. house is a mess, her, her estate's this or that, I would deal right. with a lawyer with something. I go, I, 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 that's, I never talk to you about like the weather. Like right. I don't fucking talk to you about Red Sox or whatever. And he goes, right. yeah, you're right, you're right. And it's just like, it's, it's just a big suck like that. And I, and I'm learning a lot. Like, I'm not going to do this to my kid when I'm 95. Yeah. I'm selling my house. I'm going to move into a fucking assisted living or yeah. I'll yeah. walk in front of a bus. I am not going to do yeah. this to my kid. Right. You know right. suck the life out of them because at some point it's sucking the life out of them. And it is not, it's worth it when the, the, there was some relationship there to maintain. Well, but I got t- a very simple proposition. Sorry. I didn't mean to no, go for it. Go for it. No, if you're 95, you've closed your business after 63 years, you've been sitting home for close to two years, and you never proactively have called one of your kids in two years to just Mm. chat. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's what not, more do you need to say? You can't be, it's like, not on you. You can't be well, complaining about being alone and being isolated when you don't want to reach exactly. out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's also a situation where my, my sister was living with me. It was in, you know, Harry was around. We were doing shows in the studio and stuff. And and I made an attempt to have a relationship with her, but she just didn't have the emotional maturity to even have a relationship. And so she was just always so abusive. And so at one time I was like, look, and she was like in her 60s. And I was like, look, understand something. I'm not taking care of you. So I don't know what the fuck you think is going to happen here. You better put your line you're in a row, you better suck somebody's dick and get married. You better do something. I said, because I, I go, if it's left to me, you will be sitting in your diaper in an old folks home in a shitty diaper and looking out the window in a wheelchair because I am not doing this. Well, what's interesting is she got older and she got older and she got older and we wouldn't have no conversation. And so a lot of times you find women who are so stuck in their ways in this aggressive ways, they literally die alone because... Or they force their children into being their girl, their boyfriend or their, you know, yeah. to whatever extent it is. Yeah. And when my so what happened was they I got pressured with selling the house and I had to get out of the house and move. And 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 so finally, my youngest sister called me up crying on the phone and she goes, you know, Sharon died. Right. And I said, yo, uh my condolences Sharon's your middle my, sister. my middle sister and yeah. I was like well my condolences yo my condolences <laughs> swear to God Paul I was like my condolences it's because man that's that what sucks. you said that's what that's what you say about the, the, the mechanic down the street who that's what I said away. my condolences that, you know what it, it's like that or even worse it's like when you found out like oh fuck Rod Steiger died what, that guy from you know some actor you're like what oh for real uh, oh that what sucks a shame. man oh what a guy you know the guy that played the thing yeah that yeah. guy what a shame I gotta get to the gym anyway uh, yeah it's like that kind of thing right You're moving but on. also it's... my own personal honesty which I think is like I say this is the most attractive thing about any man is his honesty hmm. is the fact that I'm honest even when it, it it's uncomfortable it's uncomfortable yeah so it's, it's, I told Harry, and he laughed the same way you did because he yeah, knows know. I'm not even making a joke. I was like, "Yo, my <laughs> condolences." I was like, "You good?" And she was like, uh, "I'll be all right." And I was like, "All right, talk hey, to you juices. later. See you later." <laughs> One time, Dante, and this is for real. He goes, "This is when she was still alive." He goes, "Listen, there, I I will not be going to the funeral." He goes, "At this point, I think he was still like half a foot." And he goes, "I might go to the funeral." He goes, "But if there's anything mildly more important, I'm gonna go to that." <laughs> he goes, 
He goes, if Fast and the Furious 19 opens up, <laughs> I'm going to go to that. If there's a if, if there's a uh, Amazon special, if there's a Twilight page. Twilight Zone marathon, I'm probably not coming. If there's a Gilligan's like, Island marathon, I was like, if they bury her, here's what I would go to. If they bury her head first in a hole with her legs hanging out the top, I, I'll show up for that. Oh, with her boy. fake Louis Vuitton slippers on. That's on a top. hell of a writer. Uh, so we we're talking about um, setting boundaries and either lack of boundaries or what it leads to. I wanted to get your opinion, Dante and Paul, on uh, the Jonah Hill story that's going around. Now, I don't know if you guys are familiar with this. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So some the, of um, I mean, there's but go, I know so, that I was reading. Well, God, I, there's a couple I've heard about. Let's see. If so I know the ex girl, apparently Jonah Hill's ex girlfriend decided to release text messages, screen grabs of text messages that he had sent her when they were going out. And in the process, uh, he was discussing what his boundaries were, saying that uh, he didn't want her. Um, she was a surfer, a professional surfer, I guess, surfing with other men. He didn't want her having relationships with uh, women who he had deemed were problematic or in problematic situations. He didn't want her hanging out, didn't want her taking like pictures on instagram and stuff sexy photos also didn't didn't want her like w wearing certain clo clothes clothes yeah. or too much yeah. or something yeah he right? didn't yeah. want her to be too revealing especially uh for when she yeah was uh, i'd pictures. like you to i'd like um i'd like you to surf in a parka in a snow parka yeah. and a hat please like <laughs> you know, no bathing suit when you surf. Right? yeah he was like yeah. Yeah. yeah so the interesting thing the way he words it he goes these are my boundaries for a healthy relationship um which is because, complete manipulation of the that yeah. all that that that's just trying to make it make it sound wording worded a certain way. Yeah, but like, it, but go ahead. So no, that's yeah. what I wanted to know is what is the thoughts on this because there's a lot of back and forth as to whether there's people saying, hey, it's okay because he's setting his boundaries. These are his boundaries. Uh, there's people going, it's terrible that she released these private text messages. There's also people saying that it's emotionally abusive what he's doing, that he is using this as an, a form of emotional abuse. So I wanted to get your thoughts on that. What? Well, when, jo when Jonah called me and asked me what to say, <laughs> yeah. I wrote, he only took about half of what I suggested. Mm. Right. Um, I think it, I think, I think a lot of bad uh, behavior comes from insecurity. Look at right. it, first of all. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And look, like this is a classic old line, but like, you know, they say about Mick Jagger, if he were a cab driver, he wouldn't have the women he has. If Jonah Hill weren't an a successful actor, you right. know what I mean? He wouldn't, whatever. And I think what happens is a, com a, a toxic combination of always being insecure. Then you finally got somebody hot. And then you start to believe all the bullshit that Hollywood gives you when you're a star, put yourself at the center of the universe. And that all comes together for that fucked up behavior. You can call it whatever you want, emotional abuse. Um, it's not boundaries. It's just trying to control somebody and showing a lack of respect for them because you're trying to control them. And um, and so to me, uh, you know, yeah, release the text and then dump the fucking guy. But like, and he's got a reputation of not being a good guy. Some actors don't really like him who work really? with him. But like, yeah, but like... Uh, uh, you know, to me, I read some of that and it's like, oh, that just reeks of a guy. He, It's almost like he's learning how to be a boyfriend. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, here's here's the only thing that, that I, I mean, if you if you have the inside track on who he is, his insecurity, so on and so forth, I get it. But to the same token, I think that um, you can have you can ask for. One of the things that if you're honest and you're asking for certain things in a relationship, it could be outrageous. It could be totally unfair. But as an adult, you get to say, no, I'm mm -hmm. not doing that. Right. So if she's saying, um, I, uh, you know, I don't I don't want a girl who dresses like that. I don't want this. I don't want that. And she's saying well, this is how I dress and this is who I am. Then we go, okay, well, it's a mm -hmm. wash. And I think that's what he did say. Although I do understand he's from, he's he prospectively, it probably comes from insecurity, but he gets to ask for what he wants and she gets to turn him down. The, if, when a woman says, I'm not going to date a guy who's under 5'5", five, five, 
or mm -hmm. she's I'm not going to take this guy because he's a few pounds overweight or he doesn't have enough money. I'm not going to date a guy who doesn't make one hundred thousand dollars a year. We yeah. set those boundaries and women have they, nobody says, wow, that was there was this girl on the Internet who basically I I, I don't know if you know Ayanla, the ch chick was with uh, she was real tight with Oprah. She she's like a therapist. And oh, she yeah, asked, she got like short hair. Yeah, and she yeah, yeah. she asked this girl, this internet girl, she's blown up on the internet, would you ever date a bus driver? Like you say this, men are not this, they're not honest, they're not, would you ever date a bus driver? And she was like, if he owned the bus company. <laughs> and and it's like, you're a fucking cunt. Yeah. It's like, but here's my thing. But everybody was like, well, she can decide what she wants. Well, so can Jonah. Right. I'm not saying it's not sick. I, I I know guys that well me personally I soft swung for a while where I I would fuck other girls she couldn't fuck other guys she could fuck other girls um but she couldn't fuck other guys and that fair or unfair whatever I'm like if that this is what I, I'm not okay with that if that's what you want to you right. want to fuck other guys too because I'm fucking I'm fine with that you just go ahead go do it with somebody else yeah and I and I think. The, the the fit the the rub is we all get to if we're honest about it you get to say what you want and you get to to put up with what you don't want to do I think it's insecure yes do I think he's a guy who has he's playing above the rim when he don't really got the, he oh, don't yeah. really got the ups for it you know what I'm saying but he's also not confident in terms of who he is as a human being to say that he can demand certain things that he not and this is where the uns security comes from so i i think that it's um we always try i think in society now to decide one side or the other i think there's multiple things going on here both of those things can be true so mm. i think they're both they're both problematic to an extent because yeah. one he can set the boundaries that he wants because he does word it and say you know if, if these are my boundaries and if you don't if all these things make you happy then i'm not the right partner for you however he can ask for what he wants but also this is the the chick you're dating like he met her th via dms if right I'm, the B if B the bikini the hot bikini chick shots so that's yeah. on the instagram was, yeah it's, right. it's not like she right. started that she was already doing that it's not like and, you met her she was a librarian and right right, 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 right. Side of her. right yeah right, all of a right. sudden she's getting wait you're uh, batman too holy yeah. shit yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah so you're right there is that where he has to now the thing that does bother me also with her is why she decided to release these texts, especially after he just had a baby, um, seemed the timing of that seems a little suspect. And it's like, what was the the accomplishment of that? Just to get a, you know, just to get she's your fucking him over. But here's the other thing: the other thing is that if she was confident in herself, she go, yeah, I'm not doing that. All right, yeah, uh, I'll also, yeah. and then it would be no conversation. You right. know what I'm saying? It, the fact that they. They litigate this on social media is insane. Same thing happened with. Well, it's uh, not, but it's not insane. It's what social media does right. to people. Well, you're right. You're right. It's, you know it's, the reason she. My my response to why she did it is because she wants to get more followers right. on Instagram. Like I mean, yeah. let's be yeah, honest. Yeah. Like yeah. right. Yeah. Like so. In other words, and I'm not saying she's not talented or whatever. So I don't want to hear women like writing in like oh yeah. You know, and I don't. Chugging, I don't care if they do. Chugging write in, along. It's you know, ridiculous. She's, chug, she's chugging along, and then you know when you she's playing up too, right? Right. She's, right. He's right, an unknown, Joan, and then Joan is yeah. He, he's a legitimate, you know, movie right. star. You don't know her up. unless you know him. So then, really. she, then when they break up, her juice goes down, and yeah. she's like, "Oh shit, yeah. my follow, my followers are off like three percent. I got to, yeah. oh, I got those messages, right?" Yeah. Yeah. But here's the thing that I found fucked up about it too was, this is the kind of stuff you talk about. You don't put it in a text. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And when I saw that it was in a text. Yeah, why would he? It's, yeah, right. Why would like he not a, have this conversation with her? It seems like a legal transaction. Yeah, but you know why? Like... You know why that is? Hmm. Because he doesn't have the confidence to stand in front of her and say, "This is who I am, and this is what I want. Take it or leave it." Or, That's what it is. Or he doesn't want a situation. He wants, I guess, it on record because the way it's worded, it's smartly worded, right? For what it is. Maybe he didn't trust her enough and goes, I don't want her flipping this over and turning this into a thing that it's not. But uh, but here's the thing. But then if you should you be in are, a relationship. Right. I, I yeah. saw it. I'm like, why? I, why? I asked the question, why write this in a text for two reasons? One, mm -hmm. 
if you're in a close relationship, this is a real personal emotional thing. Or do it on the phone if yeah, you can't do yeah, it face to face. Secondly, why the fuck would you would you want to expose yourself? She's got it in writing now. She has, yeah. Yeah. which she can then turn around and use. And thirdly, he knew that that could happen because, as you said, he carefully worded. He, wrote, he right? worded it carefully. So, yeah. like, if he knew, and I didn't think of this, but now I'm starting yeah. to think, like, well, what was his motivation? Maybe there was a motivation for him to do it, so she would release it, so that he would. I, I don't know. Yeah, like, who knows? It gets so crazy, ring around the rosy. Like, exactly. Kind of thing. And again, well, if you're in that situation where you have to do all this scheming, like it's just not a good relationship. You know, when you, you remember the to... you remember the movie the Aquila and the Bee, the little girl that does this black girl with does the spelling bee with what what but Kiki Palmer, you know, Kiki Palmer. Yeah. So oh, black, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. she's all grown up now. And <laughs> <laughs> and uh she had a thing where she was out at the Usher concert, and then and she has a you know, she got her ass out. And she's Usher brings her up on stage and he's singing to her and got his arms around her and stuff. It really wasn't that bad. But the mm-hmm. kid, her husband went and went online and, and like, well, she can't be doing. I forget what the what the I mean, see if you could bring that up Harry, the, real quick. The, What's her name? Uh, Kiki Palmer and Usher conflict. So he was like bitching because she he didn't like what she wore. So it was see through with her ass was out and this and that and the other. Now, here's the thing, but he's married and they have children also, right? So, but I, I couldn't for the life of me, why would you put that on social media? Why would right. you tweet this out? And this is your wife and, and whatever. I mean, they're still together. They have a family together. This is not even like they're just dating. Let's see here. So I'm not full. I'm, I'm going to read through this here. This is my family and my representation. Darius Jackson uh, wrote in a response to criticism. I have standards and morals to what I believe. This is it is weird that this is how you do it online, though. Uh, on Wednesday, Kiki Palmer's boyfriend, Darius Jackson, sparked controversy by criticizing what she, a grown woman, decided to wear. Uh, a clip circulating on social media uh, sees Usher searching, surrendering the nope actress who plays, serenading the nope actress who plays in the performance and singing along. Uh, Palmer is dressed in the nines for the concert at Usher's Las Vegas residency in a black bodysuit and a sheer dress. The clip eventually reached Jackson, Palmer's boyfriend, and the father of her child who commented on Twitter, seemingly shaming Palmer for the outfit. Jackson quote tweeted the video with the caption, "It's the outfit though. You a mom." Uh, that was the that was the whole comment. Yeah, Since commenting I guess. on the video, yeah. Jackson is, was slammed on social media for calling him insecure, but the fitness instructor has doubled down. Uh, we live in a generation where a man of the family doesn't want the wife and mother to his kids showcasing booty cheeks to please others, and he gets told how much of a hater he is. Yeah, and uh, this is my family my representation. I have standards and morals, and I believe. Well, then you shouldn't be with her in the first but place. But that played right. That's exactly what he wanted. Yeah. I believe that the minute he started to get those, you know, nasty, shitty responses, he's like, yeah, this is working. All press is good press. That to well, me. Yeah. Well, you know, he's, because, a, he's a fitness guy. No, but my point yeah. is, what, what it, it's like, it's like, you know, social media is like an addiction. And once you get in it, especially in the business that we're in, where we live, we're in the entertainment business. He's a fitness guy, but he's in the entertainment right, aspect right. of the world. And even the entertainment companies are looking to see how many followers somebody has, not how right. talented they are. Like, I think that there's that's a big part of this. Like, I, I don't think that should be discounted. I think I mean, of yeah. course, like I could see if they were broken up. Yeah, he was pissed at her. But like, you know, I think it's all bullshit and he's pretending to be upset so that it helps him and it helps her you know like i mean look i've been i've been starting to think about working into my act you know you see this on you yahoo or whatever like you know a woman will like take a picture of herself a certain way or a guy and then with the goal of like saying uh i shouldn't be body shamed but it's like well then just don't bring it up right Right, like it's almost like it's almost like right not just women, not only do you want to bring it up and and expose yourself, but then you want to control the narrative as well. You don't. It's just like people saying you can't say anything. That's not true. Oh, you no, can yeah. say anything you want to say, yeah. but there's consequences to what you say. And if, right. and when you say things with a malicious intent, and you know, I mean, there's there's 
you know, there's always those other situations where just people fly off the handle. But if you're flying off the handle, it's kind of like the the Aziz Asari sexual assault thing. When you read it, you go, yo, you suck this dick on the couch. Then yeah. you suck this dick again on it. Like, come on, bitch. Like, stop. Yeah. What are you doing? Like, what you, you, you and and no, and so you want to be treated like an equal and an adult. And then you want to say that you don't have the ability to say, no, I don't want to do this. And so now not only do we have to ask for the consent, but we also have to assume that when you're giving consent and you're allowing this, that maybe you don't really mean it. Or, you know, there's an absurdity to this this kind of understanding. But I think I, I, you know, and the people have always asked me this, you know, how do you handle, how do you handle, you know, because I, you know, I, I tend to be an aggressive dude. How do you talk to women? And I go, I do it from an honest perspective. And if somebody's offended by the way that I approach, then I apologize and I move on. Hmm. It's, I'm not for you. Because how do you explain, how do you explain the handcuffs that you throw on them? Oh, I mean, them? I listen. You don't they, want them to get away. <laughs> they got a furry inside. It's comfortable. They're comfortable. <laughs> so um, let's, yo, let's, let me plug your shit, your podcast, and then we're going to do the Patreon behind the yeah. scenes and continue the conversation real quick. So it's called uh, Inside Out with Paul Mercurio and, uh, you know, just uh, friends of mine, people, mainly people I don't know who, like, you know, just actors, musicians, uh, mm. you know, uh, Kevin Costner, Stephen Colbert, uh, mm. Paul McCartney, um, you know, Louis Black, a lot, some comedians, but I really wanted to focus mm. on like people who do stuff that I don't do and how they right. do it. And, with the, and, uh, and yeah, we just have these great conversations. I'm like a process geek. Mm. So I kind of try to get into like, you know, I had a really great conversation with Brian Cranston about his, uh, his uh, season two of his show, Your Honor. And we mm. talked about it all season two and why he decided to do it. So mm. it's everywhere inside out with Paul Mercurio. And I'm going to, you're going to be on it. We're going to cool. Cool. Do it I'd love to do it, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. Harry, talk to me. Uh, you could go to all my stuff on social media at Harry Turjanian. Uh, that's where I'm doing all the stuff on TikTok, on YouTube. And then also, uh, what are, oh, you could, I could do relationship consultations. Email me at advice from Harry at gmail.com. And also this Friday and Saturday, I'm going to be headlining at the uh, Comedy Diner in Newark, New Jersey, a new club that they've opened up over there. Friday and Saturday, I'm headlining. So come on out. Cool. Yeah. Uh, Harry's got a good act, man. Go see him. He's great. Oh, thank you, Paul. And, uh, I appreciate that. Yo, uh, Google me, yo. Uh, you know what it is. Yeah. Love Dante Nero, DanteNero.com. Click on consult for consultations. Don't forget the Patreon, www.patreon.com slash manschool202. Um, follow my YouTube. I got a lot of stuff going up on there, different content that I'm putting up there as well. Uh, GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do to sexual revolutions being podcasted? I love y'all. We'll see you on the Patreon side. Oh, by the way, I'm consulting too before we go. I just, oh, yeah. if you need my, my consultation is don't take that shit. That's kind of pretty much <laughs> what I tell everybody. So, all right, uh, all right. so if you Fair want enough. that, find Paul Mercurio on, on uh, social media. Go yeah. into his DMs, and that's probably the that's response it. he'll give you. At, <laughs> at Paul Mercurio. One R in my last name. Don't put two. It's that's the Australian actor, M-E-C-U-R-I-O. But, yeah, I'm social media, YouTube, at Paul Mercurio. Cool. We out.